vascular surgery versus interventional radiology. Now, what do I mean by this? Am I just trying to create unnecessary tension and drama? If you've ever been in a hospital, you will learn quickly that any care that you provide for any patient is oftentimes a multidisciplinary approach, which means it's multiple specialties, multiple clinicians, multiple physicians, multiple interventionists, and surgeons working together to provide the optimal care for a patient. So what do I mean when I say interventional radiology versus vascular surgery? We're in a really unique situation with medical training, uh, especially for medical students now, there's a very difficult choice to make. And essentially in the past, if you wanted to do any type of endovascular interventions, you had a choice to make. You could have gone into diagnostic radiology, trained for five years, and then mashed into a fellowship in interventional radiology in order to be able to do endovascular interventions. Or you could go the vascular surgery route. Now, there is a unique opportunity where interventional radiology has branched a bit off, still interconnected under the Department of Radiology, but now you can straight away out of medical school, you have a choice to make. You can either go down the route of vascular surgery, or you can apply for an integrated or combined residency with interventional radiology and you can straight away start to perform and be involved with endovascular therapy. So that's a pretty unique situation. In the past, if you wanted to go down the vascular route, you didn't really have much option besides going down diagnostic radiology versus trying to go for vascular surgery straight away. But now you have options. Now you can either go down the route of vascular surgery or you can go straight away into interventional radiology. And each route has its you know, pros and cons, as do all things. Now, interventional radiology can provide a lot of interventions, especially in the endovascular space. However, the anatomy can never be manipulated the same way that a vascular surgeon can. So that's something you need to know straight away. But I wanna show you guys an example of a case where there was a kind of a discussion and how interventional radiology intervened in the endovascular space in order to take care of a patient. Well, let's talk about this case. This is an axial CT, and it is with intravenous contrast. We see contrast here in the aorta, and we have this patient here who essentially happens to unfortunately have a cancer of the bladder, and because of that cancer, he was having a lot of bleeding. At the same time, he ended up developing a clot in his leg, which traveled up into the lungs, and he ended up having a pulmonary embolism. To treat the pulmonary embolism, the primary team was giving him medicines to thin his blood anticoagulants in the hope that the clot would start to dissolve naturally by the body. But what ended up happening is the patient kept bleeding more and more and to the point where he was becoming unstable. So initially, interventional radiology intervened and they ended up placing this right here. This is an IVC filter. It's essentially a metal mesh that goes in one of the large veins, usually just beneath the kidneys and that's in order to catch clot that's coming from below in the vessels of the leg and then that way it can prevent the clot from migrating superiorly which is going towards the heart and towards the lungs and this can potentially save a life because you have clot that gets caught up in this mesh and over time your, nat your body can naturally destroy uh, this clot. So about two weeks prior to this, interventional radiology placed this filter, an IVC filter. After placing the filter in the, in the subsequent time period, in the next eight to nine days, the patient started to develop a lot of swelling uh, asymmetrically on one side of his body. And if we take a look at the CT, you'll notice that this thigh and this leg is a lot more swollen than this one is. So the team started to get suspicious about what's going on. So he ended up getting an ultrasound and then this CAT scan. And if we take a look at this CAT scan, what you're gonna notice is that right here, which is the vein, you start to see something dark in the center of the vein. As we follow it, the rest of the vein is being opacified with contrast, but the center of this vein is not. 
So there's something, some kind of defect, a filling defect within the inferior vena cava, the inferino inferior vena cava. So the inferior vena cava right below the kidneys. Right here, this metallic structure, this is actually the IVC filter. And we see that even within the filter, there is some dark material. As we follow down into the iliac vessels, we see more dark material. So there's definitely something, some kind of filling defect within this large vein. Turns out this patient ended up having a very large clot, which extended a little bit above the filter and all the way down into the patient's leg. So there was a large clot that formed and that was all being held and sort of creeping between and above the filter. So now this is an emergency. This clot can travel up into the patient's lungs and the patient can have a massive pulmonary embolism and has potential to even die because of this. So this is a coronal projection of the same thing. It gives you a better understanding where you see again, contrast or pacifying right here into the inferior vena cava. Here's that filter once more, but then you see all this dark material. This is a dense, large clot burden. Very, very dangerous. So now at this point, there's two options. We can either endovascularly, which means from within the vessel, try to remove this clot and debulk all this clot, or we can do a surgical approach, which means to actually do a thrombectomy, but open thrombectomy via surgery. This patient, given the fact that he has cancer and a couple of other issues that I'm not going to get into, isn't the ideal candidate for surgery, general anesthesia in particular. So he has high chances, high chances of mortality if you undergo a major operation such as a surgical thrombectomy. So that's when the case was discussed with the interventional radiology team to potentially endovascularly, which is a minimally invasive approach, get into the vessel and try to debulk all this clot. And that's exactly what ended up happening. Essentially, access was, was gained from behind the knee, and from behind the knee, a lot of this clot, almost all of this clot, was actually removed. So here's an intraoperative image, again, like I mentioned before, gained access from behind the knee and actually put in a catheter, as well as a wire that went through the clot and we decided to inject some contrast. This is the contrast going in from behind the knee. And as you can see, there's a lot of filling defects. You see that the contrast is not filling this part of the vein. And there's a lot of vessels out here, which are collaterals. A body naturally tries to make other pathways for the blood to travel. Otherwise, you will lose all function to your leg. But you can tell that there's a lot of problems here. It's not a smooth pathway. Um, so there's a lot of clot material and filling defects within this person's leg and going higher up, which correlates to what we saw on the CAT scan. So then after this, we proceeded to actually um, endovascularly eliminate the clot. So we ended up removing as much of the clot as we possibly could. And slowly through multiple passes, we used the device to be able to scrape the clot from inside of this patient's leg and even higher up in, into the inferior vena cava and we tried our best to clean it out through a very small puncture which was dilated behind the knee. It wasn't even really an incision, a small incision was made on the skin but it didn't even need stitches. So through that endovascularly we were able to remove a large clot burden and this is an image here that you'll see. Now same, same position. Injecting again, here's the catheter where we're going to be injecting the dye or the contrast and as you can see it looks much better. Now we have a little bit of filling defects but not as much as before. We don't see all those collateral vessels, we see a little bit compared to before. But now you can see definitely a drastic improvement after removing as much clot as we tried to remove in this case. And hopefully the patient is going to improve, some of the swelling will improve and we'll kind of see how things go. But this was one example where vascular surgery consulted interventional radiology and after talking with each other, we decided that we were going to take the case and we did what was best for the patient and tried to help the patient out. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a general idea if you're a medical student comparing what you want to apply for and the different types of options that you have for doing endovascular therapies and how you're able to make this a career. Best of luck to you and until next time.